Hey there, I'm CJ Maurer with The Gist, and today I am gonna show you how to enable your sales team using the new sales workspace, prospecting, and lead management tools. Let's dive right in. Now, if you follow our videos at all, you know that for the most part, we don't just do like tool demos. What we do is we define specific ob growth objectives and show you how to orchestrate that through HubSpot using a variety of tools, but today, there still is a very important growth objective, which is enabling your sales team, making sure that they know how to prioritize their day, that they know how to track all of their leads, engage them as efficiently as possible, qualify and disqualify leads, really critical blocking and tackling that every sales team needs to do well in order to be successful. And so normally we would have talked about a lot of different ways to do that through custom views and workflows and things like that, but in the more recent months, HubSpot has created and launched and then relaunched its sales workspace, which is absolutely wonderful. So I'm just going to show you how to do it. As you can see here, I'm in this workspace. Now this is a demo portal, so you're not going to see a lot of activities, but I don't think you need to, to understand how it works and what you can do. Obviously I'm not going to show you all of my client and prospect communication. What you can actually see is my calendar. So you can see I'm actually blocked to shoot some video content right now. And this is the last video of this shoot, which is good because I'm starting to get a little tired. Anyways, first things first, your sales reps are going to have a summary. It's gonna show all of their tasks, high priority, all tasks, any calls, emails, LinkedIn outreach, absolutely wonderful. Task types and task queues, Trust me, we have a video coming on that soon. In the interim, just Google HubSpot task types or HubSpot task queues, and you can learn all about how to create and customize those tasks. Anyways, your sales rep's gonna come in. They're gonna see what tasks do I need to do today? Awesome. What contacts are enrolled in my outreach sequences? Another absolutely critical sales tool. And then this really cool thing called guided actions, where it uses AI to scan your CRM and say, hey, we recommend that you have some follow-ups here and it puts them into two categories, closing related or prospecting related. So prospecting is going to be somebody responded to an email. Maybe they're interested in a meeting. Closing related is obviously going to be about proposals and contracts and things like that. And you have your whole calendar here. So if you're a sales rep, you're a sales leader, rather, you should train your team to bookmark this and start every day opening up this summary. Next, you've got your leads. And this is one way to just work through all of your leads. So we'll talk about in a second how leads are assigned to sales reps, but for the time being, right, if you're a sales rep, all of my leads are gonna be assigned to me. They're gonna to default to open stages. I can click right here. I'm not leaving the dashboard. I can create a note. I can send them an email, make a call, a task for myself. I can schedule a meeting or reach out on LinkedIn, or I can enroll them in a sequence, which will drip them three or five or however many emails from me until they either book a meeting or reply. Efficiency optimized. What you can also do is open this in a queue to work even faster. So this shows you all your leads here. This shows your all bound, inbound and outbound timeline of your outreaches to them, their return volleys to you. If you have Sales Navigator, there's amazing things you can do there. If you are a sales leader whose team is expected to do a high volume of outreach, especially in B2B, you're going to want this. Now, the question becomes is like, how do we set up these leads? A lead is like an object, but in some ways not, right? Your standard objects in HubSpot, contacts, companies, deals, and tickets. A lead in many ways functions like its own object, but it can only be applied to a contact or company. So it's not like if I create a deal, I can associate a deal with a contact, a company, a ticket, a quote, a custom object. No, leads can only be attributed or associated with contacts and companies. So it's almost like a, a special designation that you apply to a contact and or company and say, this contact or company is, is also a lead. So there's some things you need to set up to make sure that you're not setting all of your contacts and companies as leads, only the ones that actually should be leads. When you go and edit your pipeline, you wanna to go to automation. So when do you create a lead? You can create a lead whenever a contact moves to a lifecycle stage, right? Obviously we would want something like lead or qualified prospect. So if you have a way to always set a lifecycle stage when, when a contact or company should be a lead, then in that instance, whenever a lifecycle stage moves to lead, create a lead object. 
Next, there's a lot of other cool settings that you can do, such as you can move leads to new stages whenever your rep places activity on the lead, like sends an email, makes a call or something like that. And then another stage when the lead reciprocates, such as responds to an email or books a meeting. So you can move it from like working new to working, working to engaged. And then you can also do all this cool automation down here once leads reach the stage. So not only can you automate stage progression, but you can automate what happens when a lead reaches a stage. This is really valuable for reporting. Like I wanna see all of my reps, not just how many leads they have, but what stages they're in. If you have some reps, reps that are like, wow, these reps are quickly placing activity on these leads. There's very few in the new, they're all at least in engaging. Whereas some reps, let's face it, resist doing the activity. And if you're gonna see a bunch of leads in that new stage, you're gonna know that they're not placing activity on those on those leads. You can also do cool things like calculate how average time to go from one stage to the next, a lot of really cool things. But the point is, is that you can autom you can and should, and this is how most people who use the lead pipeline, how it's set up, deals are created automatically, placed to new. Deals automatically move from new to working once an emails or calls are made. And deals automatically move from working to engaged when the lead reciprocates. So literally there's no manual administrative work for the sales rep. All they have to do is open up their leads, see which ones they need to respond to and actually just focus on the activity rather than updating things in the CRM, it's all done for them. All they would then have to do is qualify or disqualify. That is mostly done manually. Now, you can build workflows that automatically disqualify a lead. For example, if a lead exists for six months or 90 days or whatever as if you're a sales leader whatever is long enough for you to reach your threshold you can automatically just disqualify the lead set the lead disqualification reason as no activity and notify your sales rep to say hey we just we just disqualified this lead because it had been sitting and there was no activity and not progressing but a lot of times that's done manually so when you qualify a lead you're going to want to require a rep to create a deal and that is done in settings. You can set it up so that they are, are required to create a deal. Now it's the same as your standard manual deal creation form. So then it goes into the deal. Same thing with disqualified. You can require people to set disqualification reasons and that's really, really good for reporting. So you create a property called disqualification reasons, all of the reason why a lead would be disqualified. Maybe you wanna leave a lead disqualification note. And then what you can also do is require somebody to put in a follow-up task. So you're, you're essentially closing the loop. Like if I say this is disqualified, I'll put disqualified reason, never engaged, leave a note here, and now I hit reply. And then you can make it so that depending on the disqualification reason, your rep is required to put in a follow-up task for the future, so you close the loop on that. That is incredibly effective lead management. What they'll also be able to do is just go to their deals. So these are all their qualified leads that need more formal, okay, needs analyses or software demos, proposal presentations, you're building your quotes, you're trying to negotiate, get the contracts, that's all right here. Then they have their schedule right in front of them. They can go in and say, yep, was this meeting completed or not? They can plan their day. And then they have their activity feed, which shows you know, any updates to leads or deals that they own, people who have gotten back to them, leads who have, have opened documents or viewed websites. This is an absolutely wonderful tool that if you're a sales leader in B2B, I don't know how you get the most out of your sales team without using this HubSpot sales workspace. Again, it's all coming back to how can I enable my team to prioritize their day, make good decisions, reach out fast and effectively so that they have more time. They can either reach more people or they have more time to focus on the revenue producing activities like closing deals all in one space. So I hope you found this valuable. I hope if you haven't already, you play around with this tool and figure out how to get the most out of it. If you don't, 
you can certainly get in contact with us. We help companies set up Sales Hub, including this workspace, all of the time. Also, I would love any feedback about this video, any questions. If you want to suggest other strategic HubSpot demos that we could make, I would absolutely love to hear that. Just follow the link to our website, get in touch with us. Uh, we would love to hear your suggestions. Once again, I'm CJ Maurer with The Gist. We absolutely love making these videos for you. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon.